We are live on the Dynasty Roundtable, and we are just going to go right into it because we have a special guest tonight. He is the content czar. He's the leading content provider here at playerprofiler.com. He's my boss, and that means, you know, he, Theo and I, man, we're just like this this time of year. So give it up for the OG fantasy, the one and only Theo Greminger back on the Dynasty Roundtable. How are you doing tonight, Theo? I'm back, fellas, and we're going to be back next week with the NFL draft. So it's like perfect timing. We're right there. We want to know the landing spots, but I'm stoked to draft with you guys. Five rounds, five rounds, Matt Babbage. This is uh, truly, truly sicko territory, but I'm stoked for it. I love it. Yeah, th this is what we this is what we live for. We live for for the chaos, for the for the hecticness. This is NFL draft season. We're we're less than ten day ten days away ish. I mean. This is sicko. This is sicko mode, as the kids say. Eight eight days. Eight days, Matt. Eight Babbage. days. Yeah. I should have that internally. Yeah. Internally Thursday memorized. night. Thursday night. So if you want to draft with us, I can't believe it. I'm gonna double check here. There's one spot still one spot. available in our mock draft. These spots are filling up quick. Harry Snowman, what are you doing? I see Harry Snowman in this in the uh the chat. Harry Snowman, just jump in the draft. Yeah, just there's one spot left. You you can you can Jared Dean, hop in. Sam Babich. Yeah. Related to Matt Babich. In some way, shape, or form. Some say he's my father. <laughs> jump in, jump in the draft, Sam. Do you know ball? He is. Jump in he the draft. He's in he's in. Okay, we're, we're not, but we're not gonna quite draft yet because we have to get some nuggets from Theo first. Okay, and let's Theo, do it. Let's do it. Theo, we gotta ask you some questions before we mock. All right. We this is rookie season, rookies, rookies, rookies. So we just have some basic questions for you. Number one, right now, you've been doing these mocks on your channel. You've been like future cast all over the place. Who is your favorite rookie at value right now? At value right now mm -hmm. is probably for fantasy football purposes, Marshawn Lloyd. Okay. Um, Because I think he's in a perfect, I'll, I'll say, actually, I'll take that back. Marshawn Lloyd is, is a good value, but I'll say Roman Wilson. Because yes. you continually mm -hmm. get Roman Wilson somewhere around the two three turn in Superflex, I think after the NFL draft, it might correct back to where he was after the Senior Bowl, which is closer to like pick sixteen. Um, I think he could land quite well. You know, you look at some of those landing spots in the second round. You know, he lands with Washington. He lands with Pittsburgh. Uh, there's a number of spots that I think he could be in the wheelhouse for. He'll be right at the round the the second round, maybe the third round. But he's going to land somewhere on day two, and if he lands well with that profile, I think he's going to move right back up in our in our drafts. It's just so flat right now, and flat in a good way with appealing wide receivers. I know Seth, you're a big Malachi Corley guy. Those kind of guys are all sort of jumbled up together, and we'll have a little bit more clarity when we have the landing spots and we have the draft capital. So I'll say Roman Wilson is sort of that perfect mix of we'll have good draft capital does have a profile we like at at player profiler and also did very well at the senior bowl which has been a good like it's it's been a good uh you know source of finding fantasy value guy wide receivers that go to the senior bowl and do well whether it's Debo Samuel whether it's Tank Dell whether it's Puka Nakua it's been sort of a consistent feeder for NFL success so I'm on Roman Wilson as my favorite value right now what about you Matt Babich Who, who's your favorite value right now Ooh, so I'm going to stick in the receiver group and I'm going to talk about Javon Baker. And I know it's, it's almost a little chalk right now to even say Javon Baker, because he's, he's a guy who's been steamed up in conversations. I mean, going back to, to two months ago, but he continues to be undervalued in drafts. And we talk about guys who, go to the senior bowl and perform well, Javon Baker is on that list. And considering the talent that was around him in UCF, his production numbers are, are very enticing. And he has the type of skill set at receiver that, you know, go day two, day three, he's going to pay off for a team. He's also, he's a hard worker. You know, I, I haven't seen the dog ratings, but I have to imagine that Javon Baker is going to score highly in Cody Carpentier's uh, dog rating system. And 
we saw from last year, he pinned Trey Palmer and he's a guy who broke through and he was a third round plus pick in, in rookie picks. And so that's not necessarily play style wise, but he's a guy who he may not necessarily pay off in year one. Cause he, he, we don't have any sort of guaranteed draft capital coming through yet, but he's a guy who can find himself third, fourth on the depth chart. And he has that work ethic and talent ability to separate af- yards after the catch ability and contested catch ability. He can catch in all kind of, he can make plays in all three phases of the game and combine that with his work ethic. If he has an opportunity, he's going to be a guy who I, I want on all of my rosters. You want to see that round three though, Matt, like with him, I think it's kind of a round yeah. three ride round four, but round three, if he lands round three, you're feeling a lot, lot better about things. It's just an easier bet to make. Yeah. If he truly turns into Trey Palmer and gets that fifth round or less draft capital, then things start getting really shaky, but I'm willing to, I'm willing to bet on it right now uh, because his ADP is still pretty low. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just going to go with my guy and I don't, he's not getting a lot of buzz, but, and I think Theo knows where I'm going to go with this, but Jermaine Burton, man, Jermaine Burton, probably depending on the league, you could probably get him in the fourth round. I think that there's an outside chance that he sneaks into day two. That's just a sneaking suspicion, but that's probably a long shot. If that happens, the value is probably not going to be there, but I, Good day three landing spot. I think Jermaine Burton is going to be really good. Um, so real quick, I'll, I'll I'll twist this question. Theo, who is your least favorite rookie at value? Gosh, that's a really – and again, I'm, I'm not trying to be like a cop-out with this answer, but I do think it's a little bit – It's a there's a sort of a lack of clarity – at the end of the first round right now uh, in, in super flex drafts, because I think the landing spots will sort of determine uh, some things, but I'll say right now in terms of, I really like Brian Thomas, but in single QB leagues, if we were drafting tomorrow, I'd have to use the one Oh five on him. And that's tough. Like I like him a lot, but that's sort of like, if I have to use the one Oh five on Brian Thomas, I could trade back a few spots and I'm probably feeling like I'm making a similar bet uh, in terms of high-end fantasy success. Like, I like him a lot, but I feel like it's gotten steamed up to a point where the return on investment, so to speak, for where I'm going to have to take him in rookie drafts. Like, if I'm taking a guy 105, he better be a guy who can, I can start consistently as a rookie and also has, you know, potential for multiple wide receiver two or better seasons. Um, so I'm not, I guess it's probably, probably Brian Thomas at this point. Now, if Brian Thomas lands really well on Thursday night, like let's say Arizona trades down and they take him at 11, then I'm probably okay with it. But without knowing the landing spot, I I'm, I have a little bit of, uh, my, my comfort level is not high when I have to use that super, super early one on Thomas. And I'll say some, some news on your, your boy, Jermaine Burton today, Seth. With uh, Dane Brugler and saying that they that a couple of NFL teams have him off their list, they will not draft him. There's some attitude concerns. Oh. A lot of the, the Alabama and Georgia coaches, there's some stuff behind the scenes. So that'll be an interesting one. If he he could okay. fall big time, Matt, like Burton falls to day three, that might be your kind of Trey Palmer type guy. Yeah, that that's something that you know we don't know. Absolutely. If that's true, then you know, like I have to reevaluate some things because that's the one thing we can't. When we look at the tape, when we look at the metrics, we look at all of it. Like we don't know what kind of mental makeup these guys have. And that's the maybe the most important piece of it. So if he's if he's a challenging dude in the room and some teams have that have him off their NFL board, yeah, that's six, you know, that's not great. That's not good, Bob. So six six schools in eight years, including high schools. Hmm. So Burton, oh. you know, he, he's uh he's a little transient, a little more transient yeah. than we want to see from our our second yeah. round picks. But he can play, man. man. Definitely can play. Man, I yeah, the the tape is great, but yeah, man. Hopefully, hopefully, if it it only takes one team to take a shot on him, but again, hopefully, it's not some train wreck of a team like I don't know, the the Jaguars or some organization like that. Like I don't know, it's like some. Whoa, what, do we have, what do we have against the Jaguars? 
uh have you seen a uh, aew recently it's like a window into the cons all right all right i'm i'm <laughs> upset that i even asked the question i don't even know if you know that i watch aew but that was a low that was a low blow. that was a low blow that's that that's a wrestling low term blow. too I low blow i didn't yeah. need that today anyway but yeah it's it's not a well-oiled machine like the coach i'm doug peterson's good but i'm just saying that there's some challenges there they might not set their players up for success they they get bad reviews and surveys anyway uh matt babich uh we're gonna try to move on who is yeah. your least favorite rookie in this um rookie class at value right now i'm always happy to talk about keon coleman so ooh, ooh, right now ooh. mid second round pick and I haven't talked about him a ton on this podcast, but when I have, it's it's been negative. So the the true followers of the Dynasty Roundtable podcast know that I've never been in on Keon Coleman. And I, I think it's the raw athleticism and the the highlight plays that continue to prop him up. Uh I'm reminded of Hakeem Butler when I watch. Oh. I'm reminded of Denzel Mims. I'm reminded of the athletic freak of a player where I wasn't completely sold on the film, but I let the raw athleticism tell me that he can be great. I've lost that bet a lot of times, and I'm not going to do it again with Keon Coleman. So you look at his... I'll take, I'll his, take a little Keon Coleman, Matt Babich. I'll, 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 I'll clean up those Keon chairs. That's I, fine. In, in the middle of the second round is totally yeah. fine with me for Keon me Coleman. Like, and I'm the... like Keon Coleman, I don't know what to do with. Like I'm, he, He's the player that I'm like, he could be really good because he, there's a lot of lot to like on tape. He's athletically freaky, but uh, continue, Matt. Sorry, we didn't mean to I mean, we talk about we talk about your favorite value, Roman Wilson, and he is two spots below Keon Coleman. I don't know how accurate these sleeper rankings are that they're putting out there, but he's only two spots behind him. So if that's if that's reality, are you taking Keon Coleman over Roman Wilson? I. Uh, I think that you're not having to make that decision in most of these drafts that, that I've been in. Um, okay. But yeah, I think that Keon Coleman, it, it all it, like Keon Coleman, if he gets that top 40 draft capital, um, you know, you're talking about a guy who's certainly not a finished product, but he's 20 years old. This is a guy that outscored Jaden Reed when they were head to head at Michigan State. This is a guy that we've seen have immediate success at Florida State. And I get it. Uh, but a lot of those guys that you kind of reference, those guys steamed up a little bit higher. Um, you know, a lot of times you get those kind of hyper athletic outside wide receivers and you're having to use that like kind of mid first round pick on and they sort of bust out. But with Coleman, like Seth said, unless something crazy happens during the NFL draft, you're having to use sort of a mid second on him. And I think at that sort of price point, he's a reasonable bet. For, for every time you have sort of a bust with that, you know, the so, sort of lack of separation, big athletic guy on the outside, when those guys hit, they can really, really hit. So I think Coleman's the kind of guy you really want to have some exposure to, especially if you're a higher volume dynasty guy. And certainly the, the co-hosts of the dynasty roundtable do not have one dynasty team. So I yeah. think Keon Coleman's not the guy you want to box out of the equation unless he gets steamed up to a point where you're having to use like the 109, 110 on him. Let's say he gets the nuts landing spot. Let's say he's a Buffalo Bill. Then Matt Babich, I think your fade becomes a little bit more of a proper fade. I think this one is sort of a, it's it's the price point of him makes him sort of appealing. Because I think when we started this process, Seth, like way back, if we were doing this during the college football season, we might have said Keon Coleman's going a lot higher uh, than he currently is because a lot of these wide receivers like Adonai Mitchell and Brian Thomas have sort of have lapped him. Um, so right now he's fallen into that second round. Second round, I think, you know, you're right in the wheelhouse of taking some shots. Yeah, that's a fair point because I, I can think of one dynasty team of mine where if he were available in that range, I have a plethora of wide receivers and I can afford to take that pick and – afford a miss you know he's a flex guy that turns into a premium asset if he hits uh so i i'm you know he, he's my least favorite pick at value right now because you have to spend a mid second round pick on someone who we're classifying as a pretty good bet so i just i think that they're it, it's all about risk aversion it's all about your current team 
most of my current teams, I'm not willing to add the risk of Keon Coleman and missing on a player where I could, in a super flex league, take a shot on Bo Nix, who could potentially get higher draft capital than we're looking at. Spencer Rattler, if some team, maybe not second round, but uh, Michael Penix Jr., he's probably uh, you know around that range, maybe even trade up. There's just a lot of options for my dynasty team, and... I don't like the peripherals at all with Keon Coleman. And while I think at, you know has a, his athleticism and big playmaking ability is certainly something that can be tapped into, I just I think there would be more metrics that are showing that he's he's good at football uh, for me to be more more bought into to having some more shares of Keon Coleman. And not to get into like a Keon Coleman debate, but also when you get a guy that size and they're using him in the return game. That should tell you something, especially on a team like that is, State where there's lots yeah. of dudes. That's a great point. They want to get the ball in his hands. So that's usually like a the guys that you see getting the the you know return opportunities. A lot of the guys that end up being good good in fantasy uh, had that in their profile in college. So you know we're, we want to try to we want to try to get you just a little bit of exposure to Keon Coleman, Matt. Just a little. No, bit. That, that's a great point because dynamism is. I mean, it's a big part of the the breakout finder. You know, uh, projections that they put out there, and the breakout finder is incredibly adept at incredibly adept not inept (laughs) it is good at at predicting future success based on all of these college analytics that we need to look at so hey you know i'll open the door a little bit for keon coleman just a little little crack a little crack can can i i want to talk about uh, this is a full nuanced take and this is how you know that seth dewald is growing as a person and as a dynasty analyst i have come around on braylon allen he was once upon a time in the RB one days when some people had him way up there, I went, Whoa, hold on now. I, I don't know if this kind of running back with this makeup, he's big. I get it. He broke out early, but I'm skeptical. Okay. I like Trey Benson better. Trey Benson was my RB one Jalen, Wright, I didn't know enough about yet, but throughout the process, Jalen, Wright Steamed up my board. Braylon Allen in the, is now going routinely in these mock drafts in like the third round in the third round. I'm fine with taking Braylon Allen. I mean, who knows what can happen? We don't know these landing spots. That's one that's going to be fascinating for me to find out if Bra- Braylon Allen gets one of these spots, like the Cowboys, the chargers now with JK Dobbins is maybe off the table. Maybe not. Who knows? But I, I think I'm back in on Braylon Allen at value. What do you guys think? I think that that's the correct move. And I think that the days of taking him in any sort of a rookie third round are going to go away after the NFL draft because the Vegas markets have him somewhere in the eighties for his draft capital. And if he's selected in the third round, you'll see sort of a quick correction. It's funny because they put the over unders for Jonathan Brooks and for Braylon Allen, literally where the Dallas Cowboys are picking in the second round and where the Dallas Cowboys are picking in the third round. So Dallas has a pick right in the in the 80s. They're like 86, 85, somewhere in that range. Braylon Allen is a player they've been linked to. Um, and then they've also been linked to, obviously, Jonathan Brooks. So I think both of those guys are definitely – Dallas is taking a running back, and I think both Absolutely. those guys are two options on the board for them. And I think Braylon Allen, all he has to do is fall into the third round. And the worst case, the worst case – He's like a good AJ Dillon, where he's a guy that somebody's going to take and they're going to have utility out of him. Uh, he'll have contingent upside. He'll have goal line ability. Uh, sort of a better AJ Dillon, I think, is sort of where he profiles out to. Uh, he's got the size. I think he's going to get the third round draft capital. This is not the kind of guy that should be falling into your third round of your rookie drafts. I mean, I think at the worst, he's a solid handcuff running back in the league uh, with potential to be the goal line back. He improved as a receiver last year. I know it's sort of fake production where it wasn't like dynamic receiving ability. It was more dump offs, but still adding that to his game, getting north of 25 catches was a step forward for a young 19 year old running back. And I think you nailed it. Like Seth, we want to see guys succeed in college. And he certainly did it. He was 17 years old in a grown ass man league, like the big 10. So Braylon Allen is certainly not perfect. I don't think he's as exciting as about like three or four running backs in this draft class. But I think he's still got a chance to be like the third running back, fourth running back off the board. And I do think he'll land on day two. 
All right. One more question for you, Theo, and then we'll we'll get to our mock draft. Um, what is a rookie sleeper that you are leaving every rookie draft with as of right now? I've been taking Kamani Vidal every time we do something like this. Kamani Vidal had the elite speed score. Uh, he had he has the size. He has the athletic ability. This is a guy that had over 1,600 rushing yards last year. And I think that he's the kind of guy that I think the market is treating like he's a seventh rounder or maybe an undrafted free agent. And I think he'll end up being a fifth round pick. Now, fifth round running backs can be guys we kind of still brush aside. But fifth round running backs who land very well can end up being like Chase Brown was last year. Chase Brown gets drafted in the fifth round, has the athletic profile, and ends up steaming up our rookie draft boards. He ends up being like a third round pick everywhere, second round pick in a couple of single QB leagues. I don't know if Kamani Vidal is going to do that, but I think at the end of the day, Kamani Vidal might end up being a third round rookie pick. And right now he's practically free in some of these rookie drafts. I also think Tyrone Tracy right now is super interesting. A guy that's also steaming up a converted wide receiver, great athleticism. He's old. He's like 24 years old, but it's the, it got a little bit of Antonio Gibson to the profile where it's a guy who was converted wide receiver. He's got the elite athleticism. And we know he can catch the ball out of the backfield. Didn't really get an opportunity to do that at Purdue. Um, but I think an NFL team is going to say, we can do something with this guy as a receiver. And he's got some utility as a runner as well. Yeah, I love Tyrone Tracy. As a as a fellow Boilermaker, you know, he it, it finally took us, you know, four years to find a, to find a running back that we could actually play. And it was all thanks to Iowa uh, back in the days of Xander Horvath, the, the, the chargers fullback leading our leading our rushing attack. Uh, is it too chalk for me to say Malik Washington? Because it's, no. uh, it's, his, no, that's a sleeper. It's as true now as it, as it ever has been uh, Malik Washington. We talk about dynamic playmakers and that's Malik Washington. He's been getting a lot of hype uh, coming into you know, throughout the draft process, to be honest, I, I I don't really know exactly where he's getting drafted now, but, or where he's mocked to get drafted, but I'm not expecting it to be, it's going to be borderline day three, if not, you know, round, round four or five, if I'm, if I'm just guessing, because I don't yeah. think he's gotten the draft steam, but he's a guy who he 94th percentile college dominator rating. So he, he was Virginia's offense. 48 or 47 percent i mean that's that's a massive share of of a team's yards and touchdowns so virginia and, and this is not a pass heavy offense this is not an, an oregon a, a usc uh a washington and lsu this is this is virginia uh if you ever watched an a game of virginia i think i i think i caught one of their games and it was one of the slowest moving hard to watch offenses that I've ever seen, but Malik Washington propelled that offense was dominating the targets and he's got the burst. He's got the speed. He has the size over another late round sleeper that I like Jacob cowing where he's an inch taller and 20 pounds heavier. And they both share a lot of the same qualities where they can take the ball out of the backfield on a reverse they can get the ball in open space, but they can also win downfield. And so he's a skilled guy who's going to shine in camp, and he's a guy whose value will probably spike if he gets good landing spot, but is probably going to stay in that sweet spot of the fourth round or later in, in all of your rookie drafts. So I think Malik Washington might actually move up a little bit, uh, Matt, and I think he's a much better bet than your guy cowing. Like Washington is has that thick with like three C's at the end, yeah, uh, type frame exactly. and and the athleticism and the production. And we saw a Virginia wide receiver last year do it. Dontavian Wicks sort of exceeded his draft capital. I think there's a there's a chance that we see Washington on round three. And I think you nailed it. If he if he if he falls out of day two, then he'll be one of these guys that is drafted in the fourth round, and it'll be one of those fourth round guys that we kind of convince ourselves on, like. He's really, really fun, and the production was absolutely ridiculous. Dominant production last year. Yeah, and his ability to just break tackles uh, yeah. was was impressive. And uh, player profile is best comparable player is Zay Flowers, and that's something that's that's that really gets the engine going when you start thinking about what he could do at the next level.
you guys have Jerry Sinclair of the Dynasty War Zone in the chat. Shout out to the War Zone. Shout out to Memphis yeah. and Jerry. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, I'll I'll throw out a name here that I was actually watching film today, and I was very impressed. Rasheen Ali from Marshall. Um, this is a guy 20 years old, had 1,401 rushing yards and 24 touchdowns. And then the next year, he only played in three games. He cited physical, mental, emotional issues. And, you know, the, it was to the point where, the you know, the coach wasn't even, you know, they weren't sure what was going on. But he came back his senior year and returned to form, you know, 1,100 rushing, rushing yards, 16 total touchdowns. And the, the best part is in 2021, 46 receptions, and in 2023, 28 receptions. So this is a guy that can catch the ball out of the backfield as well. Um, yeah, I had to I had to use Ali because uh, you know Matt Babich stole Malik Washington, and uh, you know Theo stole Tyrone Tracy from me. But but you know this is what happens when you're amongst people who know what they're talking about. You don't go. You know it's you know not your first rodeo, Seth, and you're going third. Going third is never a smart move. You you no. uh, you did the same thing to me uh, last week on Futurecast when you start talking about uh, <laughs> Jaden Sheridan. That's right. And I'm like, yep. oh man, I'm gonna have to scramble here. And I went Jalen Coker. <laughs> That's right. So we're gonna do a quick break here, um, quick informative segment. But when we come back, we're gonna get right into the mock draft. It is full, so uh, maybe next time if you want to be in a mock draft, you, you just check Twitter, follow us on Twitter, be alert on Twitter. That's where everything goes. But we'll do a quick message from the pod father about the Dynasty Deluxe, or actually the Dynasty Dominator app. But don't go anywhere. Mock Draft coming at you right after this. Now, I know many of you are looking for a secret weapon for your Dynasty League, and I have it. It's called the Dynasty Dominator app. You go to the App Store, go to Google Play. It's right there. It's $5 to download, and then every year it's $5 to load the next incoming class of rookies. You can... Add Superflex, add tight end premium. It's incredible because it allows you to look up players. It allows you to vote on whether a player is a buy, hold, or sell, and then see the market sentiment on that player. And you can compare their lifetime value rating from Player Profiler to their Dynasty ADP at the FFPC, all in the price lookup tool. And beyond that, we have a trade analyzer. So you'll never lose another Dynasty trade again. And in our settings, you can set this is a win now team. This is a rebuilding team. And then we let you compare players. Look at their metrics side by side. Prospect metrics, NFL metrics. It's all there. It's five bucks in the app store. There's some add-ons for super flex and to buy the upcoming rookie class. Every year, you're going to spend $5 on this thing. And it's going to be well worth it. All right, go get the Dynasty Dominator app today. Also, go check out the Dynasty War Zone, which is a show that airs on Sunday nights. Memphis Young, Jerry Sinclair, they've done 10,000 episodes. You need to go watch every single one. They, When I say that they are some of the people that I look to I'm not I'm not kidding. Like th this is a, it's a must watch show that you have to go check out the Dynasty War Zone. But we have our draft board pulled up here and it, it we have a full draft. And like Theo said, this is a five round super flex PPR tight end premium rookie draft. So this is real sicko stuff, but I'm I'm not going to lie Theo, every league I'm in has a five round rookie draft. So I don't know, maybe Oh, I'm in mine all have seven rounds, but usually oh, especially when you go on when you go on podcasts, they cut it off yeah. at like two or three. But guys, we're 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 in the streets. We're in the streets. We're in the streets and we have uh Harry Snowman, we have Bradley Stalder in here, we have Jonathan Lang in here. Um Maddie Kiwum. Maddie Kiwum's in here. So that you're drafting against if you're in this mock draft, you're drafting against some of the, the some of the best player profiler analysts out there. So I'm going to go ahead and start this bad boy. Um, I hope every, we might get some auto picks, but that just tends to happen when people sign up real early. Um, and these go pretty quick. So I'll pause it after each round and we'll talk about our picks and I'll let people know what the picks are for the, for the podcast audience. Um, but if, if you aren't aware, we have Theo picking at three, Matt is picking right after Theo at the 104 and then I'm all the way at the tail end of the draft at the 111. So whoever JT Thomas, okay, he's in. All right. They, they would have been very shameful if you would have auto picked the the 101. 
But uh, luckily, we avoided that disaster. Now, Theo's up at the 103. I, I You could go two ways here, but I'm going to go Malik Neighbors over the quarterback, the truly elite wide receiver. Yep. And I, well, I was going to choose five, but then it would, cause I would have someone fall into my lap, but then it would look like I was ducking Theo at four. So I, I, I chose four. Uh, I still think that this pick is a question between the quarterback and the superstar wide receiver. Cause I think Romo Dunze does belong in that conversation of elite receivers who we can look on la- next year and see his value creep up to potentially top 15, 16 in the league uh, on, on a, on a public uh, crowdsource, like keep trade cut. But I'm going to go with the, the more secure spot at uh, in where I think is a slight tear break and take Jaden Daniels, who steps into a very good situation for a rookie quarterback. We see Bryce young get, get tossed to Carolina, <clears throat> excuse me. Jaden Daniels is going to have Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, potentially another receiver at his disposal, uh, along with Brian Robinson and Austin Eckler, two capable pass catching backs. Not the best O line, but a good situation to be in for a playmaker like Jaden Daniels. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I don't hate. It. I personally have Rome in ahead of Jaden Daniels in my own personal rankings, but I can't deny that if he gets pick number two with Washington, that is such a much better situation than New England, um, which is where I thought he might wind up. But just thinking like Drake May gets taken second overall, that's kind of what I thought would happen. But it really looks like Jaden Daniels is going to go number two overall. At least that's the scuttlebutt, the rumors. So, yeah, that's that's totally fine. I mean, totally fine with it, even though I'm not the biggest Jaden Daniels fan. There's no doubt that he has a ton of fantasy upside. Yeah, it'll come to team need, really. Like, if you're a QB needy team and you're taking Odunze over Daniels, I I think that's a bit misguided. I think they're it, Daniels certainly isn't a bulletproof prospect, but he is going to be a starting quarterback in the NFL for the next two to three seasons, and that and that's what really matters. Drake May falling to the 107 is Love it. becomes a steal territory, and like let's trade into it because Drake May in many other years would be the number one pick in the NFL draft. He just happens to be in a draft where there's Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels. Um, You know, is he perfect? No, but he's got athletic tools. He's got a cannon of an arm. He's got enough sample size. Um, Like that's a steal. If he falls to the one Oh seven territory, like one, you might look back on in a few years in your super flex flex league and say, how the heck was Drake may the one Oh seven in that draft 4,300 yards at 20 years old. And nearly 700 rushing yards with the uh, Josh Downs as his wide receiver one. And I'll say that this, uh, you know, Josh Downs was pretty good. And then Tez Walker, he had last year as a one year guy from Kent State. But they like Seth pushing back a little bit. I don't love the Patriots landing spot either. But you talk about a guy like Drake May and will an offensive coordinator use him as a runner? which is in his his range of outcomes, but it takes kind of two to tango there where the offensive scheme is going to have to have him do it. His chances of being sort of a one-man gang and having a few more design runs and being a little bit more of a threat around the goal line, a la Josh Allen, might be there more in, in uh, New England than in some other situations. So I'm not like, if the market wants to treat New England like the disaster zone, I think it might create a, an opportunity for you to get in there and buy. No, that's that's totally fa- that's totally fair. I I totally get it. And and to Matt's point too, like these are getting Drake May at the 107. I remember Justin Herbert fell quite a ways in rookie drafts way back in the day. And it, I mean, Drake May has a lot of things like at the 107, I have no problem taking him there like Theo was saying. That's the ultimate value of all values. And then, you know, McCarthy goes right after him. But I'll just recap the first round for the podcast audience at the 101. Uh, Marvin Harrison goes off the board. Caleb Williams is next, followed by Malik Neighbors, Jane Daniels, Brock Bowers, Roma Dunze, Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, Brian Thomas Jr., Xavier Worthy, Adonai Mitchell. And then Bradley takes Lad McConkey at the 112, which I don't think is crazy at all. Guys, any takeaways from this round one before we go into round two? Fairly, fairly chalky. I think that the one change here would be 
when we get to the actual uh, rookie drafts, post NFL draft, I think whoever the RB one or the running back who lands with Dallas or maybe the Chargers mm -hmm. has a chance to get in here. And then I think that the the one of those quarterbacks, whether it's Michael Penix, whether it's Bo Nix, if one of those guys goes in the first round, somebody's going to steam him up here at, at like pick eleven, pick ten, something like that. Especially if it's in that. 12 13 range like pre-pick 20 if they do that if let's say bo nix or Penix gets drafted the first round they get bumped up to the back of the first are you as somebody who's holding an early second round pick saying thank you like i, I that's just more value for me or are you would you have rather had that value on the quarterback it, to put it properly is that going to be proper value or or is that player going to turn into someone who's overvalued I think there's always a chance that one of those guys can get overvalued if they get steamed up too high in the NFL draft. And certainly the profiles are not something where we're like, those are surefire fantasy assets. But I think it really is the scarcity of the quarterback position in, in super flex where it's very finite in terms of the, the number of starters every week that at the quarterback spot, where if those guys have the starting job with a little bit more job security because of their first round draft capital, then I think they become a little bit more appealing. But that being said, Matt, usually when a guy gets pushed down just because, you know, a quarterback gets steamed up, then that usually makes those early second round picks more valuable. So if I'm sitting at the beginning of the second, I'd be super happy to have, you know, my choice of running backs as well as some of these wide receivers that we're really excited about. Yeah, and before we start round two, don't forget to hit, click the like button, subscribe to the Player Profiler channel. We are well on the, like, we just had the road to WrestleMania. We're on the road to 25,000 subscribers, and we're hoping to get there by the NFL draft, and we can't do it without your support. And all you got to do is uh, hover your mouse over that button and just click it. That It means so much to us. That means that you want more of what we're doing. Like button, same story. So don't forget to click like and subscribe. But, fellas, I think we're going to go ahead and kick off round two. Of course, if I can find the right button, there it is. Uh, so we'll start round two. Uh, with JT Thomas on the clock. And going back to what you were saying, Theo, I think that's very, like, those are words that a true veteran of Dynasty <laughs> says. You know, like, th that, that's how you know Theo breaks it down very in depth. And it's very well said. Like, if those quarterbacks are falling, like, Penix comes off at the 2 2 there, obviously, landing spot is going to mat matter. But uh, but yes, no, I, I totally that's that's very well said that that was mean. What did I do? A little little. Job no, the, Theo is. The oh, Theo OK. Was mean. All right. It yeah, wasn't I mean, mean more so as it was the proper pick for the position, but I was just upset that he didn't let me take him. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a there's a slight, slight chance he gets inside the top 40. It wouldn't it wouldn't shock me, man. He you know, a lot of people especially a lot of those film grinders love Jonathan Brooks. Carolina had him in on a top 30. They have two second round picks in the top 40 picks. Pick 39, that might be the way that they sort of uh, create support for Bryce Young in that offense by having a dynamic kind of two-way running back. And they certainly could use Chuba Hubbard in a, in a reduced role with Brooks kind of taking over whenever he's fully healthy. I think that that's in the wheelhouse. More likely than not, he lands somewhere, uh, you know, pick 50 and on. But if he lands well, I think that, that the 203 is probably a steal. No it's doubt about it. I mean, uh, yeah, he, he certainly could be the first running back off the board um, in, in this class with all these running backs. Kind of, you were kind of seeing all these running backs come off in the second round off the board here. Um, but just to recap the first part of this, we have Keon Coleman at the 201, Michael Penix at the 22, Jonathan Brooks at the 23, Troy Franklin at the 24, taken by Matt Babich. Trey Benson and Blake Corum come off at the 205 and the 206. Matt Babich, talk you, to me about can you force pick Roman Wilson? My dad's texting me. He's having app problems. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can we can do that. Uh, if I got to get it in in time, there we go. I got it in in time. Uh, so Roman Wilson comes up at the two seven. Matt, why don't you uh, talk about the Troy Franklin pick? Do you think he's the like 
one of the ultimate values now because of his combine performance. He didn't do as well as people thought there. Like, what do you what are you thinking about Troy Franklin? Yeah, I I don't I don't know if I'd necessarily call him the ultimate value, but the fact that he was, <clears throat> excuse me, going in the back of the first round and he was in that one ten to one twelve conversation uh, not two months ago, and now he's. Uh, sitting here at the two four because of kind of a bad combine. And, you know, I, I, I don't want to put, I, I never want to put too much emphasis on the combine. It's a really weird day. You have a, a lot of media presences that you have to make. And then, you know, at some point in the evening, you have to warm up and go run sprints and routes on a field you've never played on uh, with people you've never met. It, it, not everybody's going to take that as graciously as others. So I, I'm putting little stock into it. He's still a very talented player. Uh, you know, John Lobb is very high on Franklin. He scores very highly in his model. And, and if he thinks highly of him as a prospect, there's definitely a lot of pros uh, to Troy Franklin's game. So I, I'm not necessarily uh, in full fade mode. And if he's going to be available in the, the early mid second round, I'm going to have some shares. Ooh, I was loving my options there. Ooh, slick um, Rick. Ricky Pearsall, I, one of the more insulated rookies, I believe. Love Comes stuff. off the board at the 210, but I that leaves me. I, I don't get to take him a lot, but I'm going to take Marshawn Lloyd at the 211, and I love that. Love it. That's a good pick. Yeah, I was sitting pretty there with I had Bo Nix, Pearsall, and Lloyd as soon as and, and Jalen Wright really until he I knew he probably wasn't going to fall. But I'm going to go ahead and pause this real quick. Uh, we'll recap round two. Um, I think I got up through 207 for the podcast audience, but 208 was Jalen Wright, Bo Nix at the 209, Ricky Pearsall at the 210, Marshawn Lloyd pick chosen by me at the 211, and then Audric Estime chosen by Bradley Stalder. What do you guys make of the second round? Any surprises here? Well, Estime, the, the market sort of correcting itself a little bit. That's a guy that I believe last week when we drafted together, Seth, he was going like end of the third. Uh, but there are some smart people back on Estime. They think he'll end up being like a fourth or fifth round pick. And Bradley Stalder is also a diehard Notre Dame fighting Irish guy. So he's got that, you know, Notre Dame bias. So he wanted to get that Estime pick in. I think it's uh, besides the estimate pick, it's all pretty fairly reasonable selections. Um, nothing too crazy in terms of like a reach or anything like that. What do you think, Matt? Any any thoughts here? Yeah, I, I've seen some advanced metrics kind of come out on a couple of running backs. One being Audric Estime on the, I believe the one that stood out the most was the percentage of carries that were into stacked boxes versus the yards per carry versus stacked boxes. There's a big cluster of running backs. And then there are two at the very, very, very far right. And one of them is Audric Estime. So that's one of the, that's one of the stats that popped out to me, which is uh, he kind of got dealt a bad hand his senior season and he still succeeded in the face of that. And so some of his box score stats need to be taken at face value, just considering the type of personnel uh, that he was facing and the type of offense he was in. I, I think we all know that Sam Hartman uh, wasn't being relied on to to get this offense over the hump. Uh, not a very good quarterback, not a very good passing game in Notre Dame. Audric Estime was needed uh, to be, you know, he's kind of that bowling ball up the middle guy, but that's a role that we can, we just talked about, you know, Braylon Allen being a good AJ Dillon. And so, you know, this is a mold that can be, very productive and you know, very valuable in dynasty. If you have an RB2 handcuff plus RB, that's going to be important because if they stay on the field, they're going to get opportunities throughout the year, and that's what pays off. Yeah. And if you give Estimate the uh pro day 40, his athletic mm. profile changes completely. And a lot of people say you can't trust it, but it looked pretty four, six, five ish to me. Uh, so certainly a big improvement over what we saw at the combine. All right, we're going to roll right into round three, and JT Thomas has already taken Xavier Leggett at the 3-1. So Matty Kewum is on the clock at the 3-2, and he takes Will Shipley. So Matty takes Will Shipley. I could go in a number of directions here. I, I think I'm going to go with 
I'm going to go with a little bit of Malachi Corley because I took a running back last uh, round, and I know Seth was thinking maybe he'd fall to him at the end of the third, so I, I wanted to snipe him. The yak god in this class, Malachi Corley. That is a great, great pick. I am I am very bullish on Malachi Corley. I'm going to have a lot of Malachi Corley. Yeah, uh, Malachi Corley was in the 1A, 1B conversation for me. Uh, and this is a guy that that Cody Carpentier and I have have agreed on for uh, a couple months now, and that's Jalen Polk out of Washington. Uh, he's a guy that did not get all of the shine because he was in an offense with Romo Dunze, and he is a late breakout. But last season, he had 70 receptions, nearly 1,200 receiving yards, uh, almost broke a 10-touchdown threshold. He has great burst, 80th-plus percentile. Uh, he has the he has the traits to be that you know not to steal the comp right off the page, but the Romeo Dubs esque late round production profile, but great work ethic, good talent on the field, and ends up finding his role and ends up being a productive uh, wide receiver, you know, low end wide receiver too, because I do think he's more talented uh, than Romeo Dubs. He has a better uh, better profile than Romeo Dubs, but. Uh, he's a guy that the, the talent doesn't necessarily match the stats. And that's, I know, uh, different for me being mostly a, a, an analytics guy, but, uh, I, I love Jalen Polk's game and I think he's going to, uh, translate it well to the next level. It is, it is your, is there a mess? Braylon, Braylon your... Allen, okay. Braylon okay. Allen. Sorry. Right. I, I didn't check my phone while going through that whole. No, whole you're spiel. good. You're good. I, I, it was just, it was just bad timing. Cause you're, you're going on a, you know, a, a impassioned soliloquy on, your pick and your dad's probably frantic on the other end of the line. Like oh, I want Braylon Allen, but it worked. It worked out all's well that ends well. So we have, let's see. Uh, so we started with Leggett at the three, one Shipley at the three, two uh, Theo takes Malachi Corley at the three Oh three Matt follows up with potentially the receiver with the best hands in the class and Jalen Polk, Javon Baker goes at the three, five. I was kind of surprised you didn't go Baker there, but, it, Polk's a good pick, I think. Um, then Spencer Rattler, taken by Jonathan Lang at the 306. Braylon Allen, 307. Devontae Walker, uh, Jatavian Sanders, my guy Jermaine Burton. I get sniped, even though he's you know, he's off of some people's boards. And now I am on the clock at the 311. Man. Steve Smith's comp, too, for, for Jalen Polk was TJ Hushmanzada. Yeah, Polk's going to be a second-round pick. In the NFL draft. So, you know, we saw Pete Traeger, you know, project him to 32 overall. I don't think that's going to happen. But I think somewhere in that 45 to 55 range, I think Polk's going to go there. And second round draft capital means a lot. And I go Bucky Irving at the 311. I just feel it's... I love Bucky Irving. I, I, I love the Benson not pick too. But Yeah, I, I was torn in a couple different directions there, but I haven't taken Bucky Irving a lot. Um, here, I'll pause this just for a minute. As Theo Johnson comes up at the 411, or the 411, the 401. I took Bucky Irving at the 311. Ben Sinat comes off at the 312. What do you guys make of round three? Pretty what you expected? I mean, anytime you get to round three, things start to kind of move around and a, a lot more personal preference and flag planting comes into play. Uh, I don't think there was anything too crazy Bucky Irving would be the one where I would say the draft capital, though, Seth, like when we get to the actual NFL draft, like let's say he's a sixth round pick. It's harder to like that that profile. I think that he's still got a chance to get inside of round four, round five. You kind of would like to see that. Uh, of course, we talked about Burton uh, with some of the, the, the off the field issues and some teams maybe adjusting their board on him. But getting him at the end of the third is fine. I love the Ben Sinat pick by Bradley. I uh, actually talked about Ben Sinat with Bradley and Dan Williamson at some point recently on Stack Hunters. Um, ben Sinat is a guy that I've been taking a lot of underdog drafts. Uh, the Vegas totals for him have him landing somewhere in the late second or early third. Um, and I think in tight end premium, he's a really, really interesting prospect. Had a really high A dot, led Kansas State in receiving yards. Um, he's a very, very uh, fantasy friendly type uh, tight end prospect. Had the highest vertical among all tight ends at the combine as well. He's got some athleticism. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start this 
draft back up where you're entering the fourth round. Like I said, Theo Johnson first off the board in the fourth round at the 401. Maddie Kuhlm on the clock right now, and I'll get rid of that so people can actually see the draft board. I need to do I need to do a bit more investigating in these NFL draft props, Theo, because that's 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 a sneaky thing to look at if you're especially if you're doing your rookie draft before the NFL draft, like some real sickos do that's that like that's something that that's a fantastic thing to look at for sure so the one the one i recommend it seth is circus sports circus Circa. sports has a ton of the <laughs> just the the over unders on where players going to get selected it's also very easy to consume they they tweeted it out um that's sort of where i've been been pulling off of and it was some interesting guys made that board i'm otc here uh i am going to go with i've taken uh, two wide receivers and one running back. I think I'm going to go back to the running back well here. And I'm going to go with everyone's favorite steamer and riser, Tyrone Tracy. There you go. That's that's a great pick. That's, that's a great pick. I will uh, follow suit with my first running back of the draft and go with Kimani Vidal. Talking about him backstage before the podcast, if he goes to the Baltimore Ravens, this pick is going to be sweet because or sorry if he goes to the chargers and jk because jk dobbins who was once a raven is now reunited with with greg roman in the at, in los angeles and so if kimani vidal becomes a charger then that's going to be sweet because the backfield competition would be him and jk dobbins and as much as i love dobbins the the history is there to where even if he stays healthy, you're going to have to give Vidal opportunities throughout the year because you got to be able to preserve Dobbins' health. It'll be it'll be interesting to see how much money they gave J.K. Dobbins for the one year. That I want to look into. But I, I do want to look into it, but at the same time, that was a reason why people weren't in on Chuba Hubbard last year was because Miles Sanders got all this money. Well, that's... It's different that, because the Chargers are in a different and also cap Chuba, situation. Chuba dra was drafted, and you know I'll say that the 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 better parallel or the more I would say the more interesting parallel would be looking at Rashad Penny, where Rashad Penny got that really low contract from Philly, and he had that sort of steam for a little while, and then of course the DeAndre Swift trade happened at the NFL draft and sort of changed things a little bit. But it, it's sort of like that. Like, there, J.K. Dobbins, a guy we all want to really believe in, but we haven't seen it yet. I don't know, Malik Washington. Know. Uh, he's he's not there, Matt. Malik Washington uh -oh. was selected by Koa. Ray Davis, uh -oh. Jacob Cowing, Jalen McMillan. Uh let's just give him Ray Davis. Okay. We'll no move. need to worry too much about who gets picked where. All right. There we go. Um, Tyler so Canabley would be happy of that pick. Ray Davis. Oh, yeah. Oh, he loves the guy. Ray Davis in the fourth round. I'm I'm for it, for sure. That's the, oh, I mean, that's the Dylan, situation. Dylan You're gonna, yeah. you, got, you got Dylan Laub. You got Ray Davis. Um, the, the, these are the running back dart throw range where you got your Dylan Johnson as well. Uh, I prefer Laub I, I, to Ray Davis as of right now. But it, it's pretty close. But this is the round where you just want to take guys with a profile that that can get get some opportunity early on in their career. Yeah, like you said, we're entering, you know, real sicko territory here with the fifth round. Um, and some of these guys might, who knows, might not even be in sleeper. So we might have to m make some commentary on them but i'm gonna go ahead and take the guy that i was bullish on before the show and that's rasheen ali from marshall and and now i have three running backs um i think we're just gonna roll into this fifth round i'll recap it brief briefly um at the 402 brendan rice um at, at the 401 rather theo johnson brendan rice tyrone tracy taken by theo Kamani Vidal at the 404, Malik Washington at the 405, Luke McCaffrey taken at the 406, Ray Davis at the 407, Dylan Lobb at the 48, Johnny Wilson at the 49, Isaac, Go I can't say this guy's name, Gorendo at the 410, Rasheen Ali at the 411, Jamari Thrash at the 412. And at the 51, Jalen McMillan, Cade Stover comes off at the 5. 
502, and now Theo's on the clock at the 503. I'm going Jaheim Bell. It's a good pick. Um, and I think Jaheim Bell's really good value here in the fifth round. Um, very athletic guy, a little smaller in terms of height and weight, but he has the wingspan uh, really, really good after the catch. If he lands on a team that's willing to give him a you know plus 50% snap share, uh, he could be really interesting. Gerald Everett-esque. Yeah, he's a little bit short for a tight end, but honestly, yeah. like watching him play, and he's not the greatest blocker in the world, but these prospects like later in the draft, you, you're not going to get everything. But what he does really well from what I saw is he's a great receiver and he's great with the ball in his hands after the catch. Like he's a good athlete. So I think I like that pick a lot. He's one of my sleepers. Tight end shrinking anyway, Seth. All the, all your big tight ends in, in uh, Dynasty right now are all 6'4", 240. 250 tops so yeah. like you know the guy like jaheim bell a little small but it's the right era to be a small tight end yeah i again fifth round absolutely i, I like the pick a lot so matt gets his guy jacob cowing you want to talk about jacob cowing in the fifth round matt yeah i would love to uh let me grab this pick here for us all first we're gonna go frank gore jr all right. Um, so Jacob Cowing, what's the big difference between him and Malik Washington? Well, Jacob Cowing broke out early at UTEP. So he was a small school early breakout before the age of 19. Uh, went on to have consecutive 30 plus percent target share seasons for the rest of his college career. And similarly, he was also the lifeblood of the Arizona passing game. And so he is undersized, but that's why he's a fifth round pick. So I'm not going to be too afraid of his size at this cost. Uh, what I'm going to buy into is his skill and his ability to, to get open. And in this game, if you're small, but your technique is good and you can find your way open, there's infinite ways for an offensive coordinator to get you, to get you in the position to succeed. And so he's a guy who's going to be a gadget tool for, for a number of teams. And if he lands in a good landing spot, uh, it, it makes it all the better. And now I have a decision to make here in the fifth round. And I'm going back and forth here, guys. Not going to lie to you. So I'm looking. Just take another running back, Seth. You're in a running back mood. Eh, I don't know. How much time do I have? 30 seconds. Oh, that's plenty of time. I'm, oh, man. I'm going to take the the super pro well he's not a super producer but he was pretty good at Illinois. I'll t I'll take the um should take that mm. Dylan Hulker. I could really go in a number of different directions. I'll go Isaiah Williams. It's probably not smart to take a wide receiver. It's probably more it's probably smarter to take maybe a Blake Watson there who I know a lot of people in the chat are very high on but I don't I haven't taken a lot of Isaiah Williams from Illinois who had a 1000 yard receive receiving season this past year and was productive enough even at age 20 over 500 receiving yards so again not a terrible prospect um anyway I, I'll, I'll take him and that's gonna wrap up our mock draft and we're, we're i mean I, I i guess we're professionals because we're right at an hour that this mock draft is over um Let's recap it a little bit, and then maybe we'll get a bold prediction for the NFL draft from Theo. But what what stands out to you? Who do you think had a really good draft here? I love my draft. I think my <laughs> draft uh, represents everything I want in terms of high upside selections. Um, but I, I'll say jo Jonathan Lang, I thought he did some nice things with Roma Dunze, Blake Corum, and then he gets Spencer Absolutely. Rattler. I like that start. And then I, I like what um, – shout out to Samuel Babich. Um, Drake May, great value. Roman Wilson, great value. And then uh, Braylon Allen could end up being great value. So I had really, really good first uh, three-round picks. I sort of like both of those those drafts. Matt, uh, what do you think here? Who had a good draft? Uh, yeah, so Chuck Ganopoulos is going off in the chat for him, but I agree. Uh, I like what Sugar Ricky put together. So – uh, Xavier Worthy at the back of the first. Uh, if you if you've heard me talk about Xavier Worthy, you know how much I love him and and Slick Rick the Ruler, uh, Ricky Pearsall. If 
I know we we laughed at him at one point, but from now on, if if Steve Smith is is talking positive about a receiver, I'm gonna listen uh, because he knows. It turns out he knows how to how to identify talent. Uh, Re Cooper Cup, but uh, I, I love what Ricky Pearsall has to bring to the table. Jermaine Burton, we've been talking about him being being a sleeper who could be an ultimate value based on potential off off the field concerns. Uh, I don't love the. Garendo pick personally he's not my favorite uh of these late round running backs but uh Dylan Laub was gone and and Ray Davis was gone so I, I suppose he was pretty much the best running back on the board um so I, I liked that draft for sure and then Bradley definitely uh brought the heat by taking Estime McConkey Sinat um hey, that was a that was a great draft from Bradley as well I, I really like what most people kind of brought to the table today I, I blew it. I'm just going to say this. I should have taken Blake <laughs> Watson. I should have probably taken Ben Sinat if I had to do it all over again. That would have totally transformed my draft. You know, like it, anyway, but it's a good lesson being at the 111. I'm fine with Adonai Mitchell and Marshawn Lloyd. I think those two picks were great. But Bucky Irving, I, I heard Theo talking about it. Like, who knows? Like, this is a smaller running back. He didn't run a good 40. He might plummet in the draft. I like Ali at, at the 411. But yeah, I, I was kind of at the five eleven. I was going, but in between too many names. But this is a good exercise for me. It's a good exercise for everybody out there. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe before you go. And before we go, I'm gonna stop sharing so we can actually uh, see everybody. Um, Theo, plug whatever you have to plug, and give us a bold prediction for the NFL draft. Bold prediction for the NFL draft. I think that we see a tie for the most wide receivers ever selected in the first round. I think we get seven. And I think at the end, we'll all be rooting for, for there to be the eighth, but it might be pick 32 that's the seventh. But I think we'll see a tie. I don't know how bold that is. I think it's right around the number, but some books have five and a half. I like the over for the wide receivers. Uh, yeah, I'll plug what we're doing next week with our draft coverage right here at Player Profiler. You can watch every single round with us and uh, post-draft shows on day one and day two. We're going to have two post-draft shows. One of them is going to be hosted by Seth. Uh, we're going to have you know five or six guys in 10-minute segments sort of recapping the day from a fantasy perspective. It is going to be very cool. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. And check out Dynasty Life. I just dropped one with Ryan McDowell. I've got one with Scott Barrett coming out this week, trying to load up as many Dynasty Lives as possible before we get to Thursday, Seth, we're eight days away, Matt Babich, eight days away. Eight days. So is this, I guess this is the time where I, I plug what I have to plug in. Plug it, plug it away. Uh, so bold prediction, just because I want to have fun with it. JJ McCarthy, not a top five pick. Uh, we, he gets the, he gets a similar Levis treatment, except he does go uh, early to mid first round. All these talks of three, four, five, these trade ups, none of them are going to happen. Uh, not a single trade up into the top five is my other, is my older, other bold prediction. Um, so player profiler rookie guide is officially out there. So you got a, you got a verbalized version here on the, on the dynasty Roundtable podcast, but for 20 bucks, you can get the most in-depth rookie guide in the business. I mean, I was, I was scrolling through it. It feels like every year we just up the game to where look, I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not in the behind the scenes conversations. So I, I'm, a, I'm another consumer when I see this product, and every year I'm like, damn, they did it again. They, they outdid their se themselves again, and that's what happened with the rookie guide. It looks incredible. So many stats, individual rankings, personalized player bios, uh, and you can even find one written by me. Uh, for Xavier Worthy, uh, just an incredible piece of content. And before you go into your rookie drafts, be sure to have the rookie guide. So go get it on playerprofiler.com. Other than that, you can catch me on Saturdays for, uh, on the Player Profiler News YouTube for Player Profiler today. Uh, once again, my weekly shout out to everybody who's involved with the Player Profiler News team. Uh, Bradley Stalder and is doing an incredible job with his, his anchors. Uh, we have player profiler news dropping on the website constantly on the Twitter page at profiler underscore NFL. 
constantly. We have content going to the YouTube player profiler news constantly and seven days a week. We have player profiler today on that YouTube channel, on that Twitter, on Facebook, bringing you the same news, not the same news every day, but the same great news show every day of the week. Uh, it, it's an incredible time. So be sure to check that out. And you can check me out personally at Saturdays at 6 p.m. Central. I mean, yeah, amazing. So you guys got to be tapped into Player Profiler News. You go follow that channel or subscribe to it. You got to subscribe to this one, like the video. Go, I mean, Player Profiler to me, there's nobody doing more good content than Player Profiler, bringing in so many talented people like John Lobb, Memphis. Obviously, Theo's doing his thing. So you got to be tapped in for all of it. Obviously, you know, I didn't even mention the Podfather who's doing shows, Mind of Mansion, Sonic Truth. If you haven't heard of those, you've probably been living under a rock, but go check those out all, all on the Player Profiler YouTube channel. You can follow me at Seth underscore D-I-E-W-O-L-D, D-Wald, not Die World on Twitter. And until next time, I mean, I guess we have one question in the chat. We yes. can maybe end with this. Yes, go buy Rushy Rice. Matt? We said last week that he was a firm hold. If the value is actually dipping, I'm I'm gonna buy. Yeah. Yep. I'm I'm. Buying. I've had a week to think yep. about it, and I'm I'm. I, I think the dust has settled a little bit to where I'm I'm willing to do it. Startup values are, are reflective to him being a little bit of a discount right now. Go get yourself some Rashi rice. Absolutely. And until next time, nobody cares about Aaron Rodgers, even though we want him to help out Garrett Wilson this year. So if he can do that, he will have served his purpose. Just focus on football, Aaron. Wiseman for Heisman, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Hey, I want to thank you for being part of this broadcast. If you have any thoughts on it, leave a comment. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like. And if you want to see more shows on the Player Profiler channel, subscribe to it. That's how we know you want more.